welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we are going to be entering the realms of electricity with this high voltage puzzle by Florian Wartman. Um, now, we've had this recommended many times over the last few, or well, last couple of weeks actually. Apparently, this is a beautiful, beautiful solve. Um, it involves a trifle. Uh, or a trifle of ambiguity. These orange lines could be one of two things, and I know all about ambiguity, having, it, well, having done battle yesterday with this puzzle, just rogan enough by Leroy. Thank you so much if you were one of those who joined us on the premiere that we did at seven o'clock yesterday evening. Um, Mark and I loved talking to you in the chat and. Wow, well this puzzle is incredible. If you didn't see it um, and you're wondering why it's so incredible, well every one of these standard clues in the grid is lying to us. So this cage doesn't add up to nine. This black dot doesn't contain digits in a one to two ratio. That X doesn't add up to 10, etc, etc. Everything is lying and yet you can solve it logically. You just have to throw out of the window everything you thought you know about Sudoku. Um, it, it, well, I know most people only have a limited amount of puzzle time in any particular week, but if you can find time to have a go at this one, you won't regret it. This one, and I'd also recommend a puzzle called Eye of Sauron, which we did a few days ago by Ricky Cruz. They were both absolutely wonderful in a sea of wonderful puzzles, those two stood out and definitely worth worth our precious time. Um, now, what else do I need to do? I need to say a very happy 20th birthday to Wes. Wes, I think it's your birthday today. Your girlfriend, Syra, wrote to us and uh, she wrote us a lovely message, actually, in which she basically said that uh, she loves how happy Sudoku makes you. And I think that we can all empathize with that. Um, so Wes, we hope you have a brilliant day with, of course, lots and lots of cake. Um, now, what else do I need to say? Um, well, just actually an appeal, really. We don't do this very often, but if you do enjoy the content, please think about liking the video. We are told that this does wonders with the YouTube algorithm, and we don't normally ask people to like the video, but if you do enjoy the content, please consider it. We will be most grateful. And if you're not subscribed, do think about that too. Um, yeah, we'd be, we'd be grateful for that as well. We're heading up, we're not a million miles away from the extraordinary total of 500,000 subscribers, which is, well, it's, it's absolutely batty. Um, but uh, yeah, maybe you could help us to get there. We would be extremely pleased if we ever did. Um, other than that, it's very nearly the 1st of June, and on the 1st of June we've got two competition packs of puzzles launching over on Patreon, 4 o'clock on the 1st, that's when to look out for that. Um, solve all the puzzles, give yourself a chance to win the prizes, and um, and enjoy what should be two magnificent, well, we know that they're, they're magnificent packs, but um, there's sort of, sort of a standard pack, which is which will take you a while, but then the doctoral pack, if we get many solutions to that, I will be astonished because that is, well, I think it's, it's several dozen puzzles. I mean, incredible, all with video solutions. So we're very grateful to Panthera at the Asylum and to Grockles for creating such a wonderful, wonderful gift for our patrons coming up very soon. Now, I can't think of anything else I've got to tell you, so why don't we have a look at High Voltage by Florian, and these are the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Along a thermometer, digits must increase from the bulb end, so that means that, let's say this digit was a 2. As we move up the thermometer, just as temperature rises, as, it, as um, well, and mercury rises, I should say, as temperatures rise, so digits must rise as we rise up the thermometer. Now we don't have to increase in steps of one, so we can go from two to four, say, to six to nine. That would be a completely legitimate way of filling the thermometer. Now, these orange lines are interesting. An orange line is either a sequence of non-repeating consecutive digits in any order, or a line on which neighboring digits differ by at least five. So what that's telling us is, let's imagine we worked out it was the first of those, a sequence of non-repeating consecutive digits in any order. And let's say we worked out that, um, I was about to put a one here, but that's si clearly silly in the context of the thermometer. Let's put a one there. Let's say we worked out that this was the consecutive sequence. If we worked out there was a one on this line, 
we would know that the consecutive digits would have to be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and then we just have to populate this line with those digits in some order. Something like that would be a legitimate way of doing it. Now, on the other hand, the orange line could be a line on which neighboring digits differ by 5. So let's imagine this was a 1 in that instance. This neighboring digit would have to be at least 5 away from 1, so it would have to be uh, at least 6. Now it can't be 6 because if it's 6 this cell would have to be 1 again so let's make that 7. Then this could be 2, it's got to be 5 away from 7. This could be 8 and that could be 3 and that would be a legitimate way of fulfilling that second constraint. Um, now there's one more rule which says that in row 8 column 5 the two lines cross each other. Okay so all that's saying is that this that is one orange line and this is a, another orange line. Uh, not orange line. Well, yes, orange line. But you know what I mean. I've made them blue and purple just to completely confuse my speech. Um, but what these lines are not doing, I think this is probably the way to explain it. What the line is not doing is going back on itself like that. So bear that in mind when you're trying to solve it. Now do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And the first thing I can see here is from the thermometers. Now there are, I think there are only two things I really know about thermometers. And they are that the digit one on a thermometer can only ever go in the bulb end. Because if we put one here, we'll have to put zero or lower there. And although the software lets us do it, the normal rules of Sudoku will say, no, no, don't do it. So where in this column can one go? And I think the answer is only in those two cells. And the interesting thing about this, actually it is a very highly symmetrical puzzle. Well, almost. It's almost highly symmetrical around column five, except I suppose these thermometers are both going the same way. And these little orange lines here are not quite symmetrical around this axis, are they? But other than that, it is very symmetrical. And certainly in column seven, we can ask the same question about ones. But we can also, I think, ask the same question about nines. Where do nines go in column three? A nine on a thermometer can only ever go in the, in, in the tip. Because if we try and put nine halfway along the thermometer, not even Sven software will allow us to put 10 into this cell. No, no, we can't do it. So, um, so we can't do that. So what we've got to say is that nine has got to be here or here, and nine has got to be here or here. And this looks interesting to me because this is two X-wings, I think. Um, what is an X-wing? Well, it's this pattern. Let me just highlight those cells for a moment. So let's have a think about what, what this means. If the ones are locked into the same two rows of the grid in this column and this column. Well, when we, looked at the, when we look at the solution to this puzzle, if we saw that there was a one in this cell, we know there would be a one in this cell. So that forms the first sort of possibility, the first slash of the X that the X-wing gets its name from. Now, the only other way that the ones could be arranged in this puzzle, if this isn't a one, we know in column three, this will be a one, and therefore this will be a one in column seven. So this forms the other slash of the X, and this is why it's called an X-wing. And the crucial thing to realize about an X-wing is that, uh, well, it's to ask a simple question, really. If you're confused about X-wings, just look at this row here and ask yourself this question. How many ones are you anticipating there being in the correct solution to this puzzle in this row? And the answer hopefully you'll give me is one one. How many ones are we anticipating there being in this row? And the answer again is one one. If there were two ones, the rules of Sudoku would be a problem. If there were no ones, they would still be a problem. So there are in these two rows, there are two ones, but we know that in those four cells, there are also two ones. So how many more ones can we put in these cells in rows one and six? And the answer is none. Those green cells cannot contain ones um, because of the X-wing pattern. And the same thing is true for nines, look. So nines is exactly the same logic 
those cells there cannot have nines in them. So I imagine we can probably do something with this. Let's think about it. So if we know these three cells can't be ones, Uh, well, we know the other thing we know is that one of these has to be a one. Ah, right. So let's think about this in the context of the orange line, because if this is um, if this is a Remban line, which is the constraint that um, the sequence of non-repeating consecutive digits that's often called Renban. If this is a Renban, and we know there's a one on on the line then it's the digits 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. But if it's a whispers line, which is the other, the, the neighboring digits differ by at least 5 condition, then because we know there's a 1 in one of these cells, we know those three will all be low digits. Now this, right, so I have not really talked about this, but this is a sort of, this is a secondary secret about Sudoku. Some of you know the actual secret of Sudoku, but there is a secondary secret relating to whispers lines. And that is, well, there's two secrets really. The first is, let's imagine this was a whispers line. Could we put a five on it? And the answer to that is no, of course you can't. Because if you put a five on it, what's the next digit? What's the neighboring digit? Well, it's got to be five away from five, which means it's either zero or lower or 10 or higher, and that won't work. So you can't put five on a whispers line. And that means each digit on a whispers line can be thought of as sort of one of two options. It could be a low digit, i.e. a number below five, or it could be a high digit, a number above five. And you'll find, if you think about this, that the line oscillates in terms of that polarity. So if this is a low digit, what does this digit have to be? Well, because it has to be five different from a low digit, even if this is the lowest of low digits and it's a one, this will still be six, i.e. it will still be on the high side of five. So this is, and the same is true there, obviously. And then if you th imagine this line extended here, well, this would have to be five different from, from six or five different from nine. It's only got the options of being one, two, three, four. So you can see that it's oscillating. Now, thinking about this line in the context of oscillation, um, which is perhaps actually, os well, alternating, cu alternating current, that's why this is called high voltage. I bet you that's why, I bet it's something to do with alternating current. Anyway, um, if this, because we know one of these is a low number, we know one of these is selected from the low side of five, one, two, three, four, which means that the line parity or polarity, those would all be low numbers. So that means that whether this line is a Renban or a Whisper line, these three digits have to be quite low. If, they're, if it's a Renban line, they could get as high as five. If they're a Whispers line, they can't even get that high. They'd have to be one, two, three or four. So these cells are very slightly restricted. Now, can we do the same thing here with the nines? Yes, yes we can. Because again, if this is a Renban, we know the numbers on it. It's got to be nine, eight, seven, six, and five. But if it's a whisper, then we know that those three digits have to be high polarity, which means they're selected from six, seven, eight, and nine. So whatever type of line it is, and we don't know, those three digits are on the high side. And the worrying thing about that, oh, that's not nine because of the X-wing logic, and that's not one because of the X-wing logic. And that's very annoying because unless I am being a beef-witted Apple John, that is not telling us anything at all. Um, bobbins, right, okay, sorry, that does not seem to be sensible. Can we do anything with... No, <laughs> oh no, right, okay. So we've got to look for something else, which must be... 
That's really strange, actually. I, I'm sure that there must be something we can do with that because it's so beautifully set up. I like the fact that, you know, these sort of X-wings are staring us in the face. Row five, is that restricted? We've got this line joining two thermometers at the different ends of the thermometer. So if these, so if this was a whisper, that would be weird. That would be putting a lot of pressure No. Right. OK, that's very pretty indeed. Right. This is probably where we should have started. Row five. This line, I can tell you for a fact, is not a whispers line because of the polarity. Because if it's, um, well, let's look at it. Imagine, imagine this was a low digit. Then we have to oscillate polarity. So this would be high. This would be low. And now look what we've done. These digits all have to be lower than this digit, which we could do like that, but not and simultaneously satisfy this cell. And I think that's going to work exactly the same way if we make these high look, but with this thermometer, this is very pretty. Because if now we have to fill this with higher digits than the minimum of this, so it's the best we can do is six, seven, eight, nine, and that's got no options. And that means that this line here is a Renban line, it's a consecutive line. And I'd like to record that somehow. And the way we shall do that, shall we shade it or shall we? I could line draw it maybe. Over overlay the line. Oh, but that's gonna be a yeah, no, I'm not gonna be able to ooh, I'm not gonna be able to overlay this one, so maybe I won't do that. I could Oh, I know what I could do. I'm gonna use the letter thing. I'm gonna put Let's see if this works. Can I put R in? <laughs> yes, I can. Right. So this is a Renban line. That is what we are going to use. So can I put W in as well? I can. Right. Oh, this is Sven's marvellous programming again. So this is a Renban line. And that means it's consecutive sequence. Yeah. Right. Right. So it's a consecutive sequence. So there can surely be no one on in these cells. Because if there's obviously if there's a one in one of these, the sequence is one, two and three. And this thermometer tip is absolutely broken because even if it's a th well, there's just <laughs> there's no way of filling this thermometer. Hopefully that is self-evidently obvious. We're going to run out of digits very quickly. So that means that one. Well, that means that means this is a one. That's that's weird. So yes, because you can't put one on the Renban and one can only go in the bulb end of a thermometer, you can instantly rule one out from everywhere apart from here. And putting one there disambiguates the X wing because this slash of the X is now impossible because this can't be a one. That is gorgeous. That is absolutely gorgeous. So and just let me think about what we actually needed to do to so to get to get this, all you needed was the central row and the thermometers. That's it. That's what gave that. That's what yields this this result. That's gore, That's beautiful. You don't need any of these other lines to to sort of create that break in, if you like. This can't be one. So we know that in this column, this is the one, which means this is the one. This is not the one. And and we can say as a result of that that I don't know. Well, there's a one down here by Sudoku. We can say that for sure. Oh, hang on. Oh, yeah, this is gorgeous. Right. So now look at here. We have to put a one on this line. In fact, it's going to have to be in one of those two cells from our earlier pencil marking. But now we know one of these digits is a nine and there's a one on its line. So it is definitely not a consecutive sequence because because it's not. If one and nine are on the line and it's a five cell line, you can't put consecutive digits on the line and get enough digits in there. That won't work unless there are numerous Schrodinger cells. So that means this is a whispers line and that means I should put W on it. And I'm going to put the W here because uh, this one's already got too many pencil marks in it. 
even well mark mark would add liberally to this cell but i won't no 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 um so this is a whispers line so that means these cells are low digits which is very well neither of these can be four because if you put a four on a whisp in the middle of the whispers line you'd have to put nine on both sides of it and that's going to break the rules of sudoku so these cells are actually only able to be uh, one two and three which is interesting ah but as this is a whisper line you can't put six in the middle of it oh and in fact you can't put five on it of course you can't put five on the whispers line at all and you can't put six in the middle of it because that would need one on both sides so this cell is down to seven or eight this oh no uh, this one could be six because it could have one next to it the same is true here so this line has got it's got at least a little bit of restriction and actually because of the symmetry what I should now do of course is to ask the question not about one two three on this line but how is that nine eight seven and that's not going to work because that thermometer is most certainly broken if there's a nine on this line given we know it's a Remban it's nine eight seven now this cell whatever we make it this thermometer's got a lot of problems don't give your thermometers problems so where does nine go in the row if it can't go in those three cells and it can't go halfway along a thermometer it's got to go here now this ambiguates the nine x-wing which now can't have a slash from here to here so that means that these are nines <laughs> um that's not a nine now ask where nine can go in row six because nine by sudoku has to go onto the onto the line i almost said the whispers line well it is the whispers line because it's got a one and a nine on it so it's definitely not a remban line so that one gets w'd as well um that was there's my w i don't have to use w very much in sudoku but i do today um so this is a whispers line it's not got five on it therefore let's take the fives out let's take the four out of the central cell here because if it, this is a four you'd have to put two nines into those cells to be five apart so that's not a four which gives us a one two three triple in the box which is weird and these squares have got to be sixes sevens eights and nines and of course they can't be sixes because they'd have to have ones on both sides of them so these are seven eight nine there's a seven eight nine triple in the box which means these squares are four five and six which means that uh can that actually be four no that can yeah it's like this one can be six and this one can be four because you can put the extreme digits into these two cells so we can't actually disambiguate that I don't think right ah yeah 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 right look at look at row five though that's completely forced it's completely forced because of the thermometers we've got to put two three seven and eight into the gaps but this cell is higher than these two digits so these can't be seven and eight or this thermometer will look very strange indeed so this has got to be two this has got to be three this has got to be seven this has got to be eight that cell's got to be six by sudoku now six has to go next to one on the whisper we've lost our w as a result of that which is slightly sad um this cell's got to be four by sudoku which goes next to nine just reversing the logic it's a very good tactic if you ever faced with sudokus with heavy heavy symmetry always try and be bouncing around from you know left to right or however the symmetry wherever the axis of symmetry is try and try and repeat the logic on both sides so so now we've got a seven eight pair here and a two three pair here we've got a four five six triple but now this is so weird the four five six triple is completely unresolved this could be a four and this could be a six or vice versa or this could be four or six um so 
what do we do now? We might have to think about other lines, maybe. Or thermos. Five, six. Yeah, this, this thermos restricted. Because, because its tip can't be a nine. So I think we've only got one degree of freedom along here. Each of these has two options. Now, that's very, yeah, that's very strange actually. But this side, if we, again, maybe it's this one I've got to look at to actually think about the rotational symmetry. But this, this one seems very unrestricted indeed. Let me just think about this. Oh, oh, no, no, no. I know what I can do here. Come back to this, this column. These cells don't include a two. So two must be here, because if I put two here, not even Sven software will allow me to put 1.5 in there. So that's two. This cell is therefore either five, six, seven, or eight. Now, does that mean I can put, I want to say the fact I can put two here makes me want to put eight into this column. And I think I can, can't I? Yeah, where does eight go in this column? It can't be low, it can't be lower on a thermometer than a six. So it's on this thermometer. And again, if we put it here, that's got to be eight and a half, which is silly. So this is eight. Oh no, that doesn't see, that doesn't see into those cells. Um, right, but again, this thermometer is pencil markable just as this one was, because this bulb cannot be a one. So six, five, four, three. Yes, it is. So this is either four, five, that's three or four, that's two or three. Ah, okay. So this one could be whispers or Renban. Look, those are reasonably close together and they have the same polarity. With, with oscillation, so that looks okay. This one. Oh, no, 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 right, that's that's so sick. Right, look at this, look at these two. Actually, I don't like the purple. Let's use uh, blue, maybe. I'm not sure I like the blue either. Um, okay, let's use green. Uh, these, these are the important decisions. So. How is this going to be a whispers line? And it can't be because the, the numbers are so carefully sort of uh, designed by Florian that it doesn't work. Because if it's a whispers line, you can't put five on it. So this has to be a four. But, that, but by polarity, this needs to be a low digit and it wouldn't be, it would be a high digit. So it's, it doesn't work. And if that's true, this is a Renban line, which means I have to, of course, award it the letter oh no 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 i don't want to do that i want to give it a little r like that um so this is a remban line and it uh, anything about that is that i don't actually think i can do any elimination as a result of that because if that's eight seven six five four so yeah there's nothing you can eliminate from here Oh, you can't even. I was wondering whether I could lock a one off this line, but I don't even think I can do that. If there was a one on this line, it could be one, two, three, four here and five here. And that would also seem to be possible. That's very annoying. Um... <laughs> oh, no, I don't know what to do with that, I'm afraid. OK, so is it? this digit somehow that digit has to be uh two three four or five i think don't see any reason why it can't be those oh right one is this five cells it is right so again similar logic here how could this line be whispers it can't be because again this is on the low side of five. So this would be the low side of five and this should be the low side of five, but this is a seven or an eight. So this is another Remban line, which again necessitates putting in an R into the grid. And now if this is Renban, 
Hang on a minute. How, how can that really be? I suppose that could be, that could be eight, but this can't be two, I want to say. If this is two, two, three, four, five, six is as far away as you can get. So this is not a two. And that places two in column three. This is this is beautiful. Whoa, now two's on this line, which is Renban. Oh, so it's got three on it as well. Because look, it, it's got a two on it, and it's definitely got a four or a five on it. So it must have the inter inter the <laughs> the interrupting digit. Let's call it the interrupting three. Um, has to go in there. So can that that can't possibly be eight and possibly not seven. We've just done that logic down here, haven't we? Two. So there's a two on this line. It's a five cell line. Two, three, four, five, six is the highest it can get. So that cannot be seven or eight. Which is probably it. Oh, no, that is it. No, that's important in this column now. Oh, this, I tell you what, this is such a beautiful puzzle. The puzzle it reminds me of, bizarrely, is Ricky Cruz's puzzle the other day, where the, the logic in that one was very symmetrical around these columns. And it's just amazing what these constructors can do with this sort of bouncing back and forth stuff. So this is five, six, so that's got to be seven. And that's got to be eight. And if this is eight, that's eight, seven, six, five, four. This can't be three. And if this can't be three, you know what that's doing in this column. It's placing three up here. Now this could be whispers still then. That would have to be a one if it's whispers, because it couldn't be a four, because that four would be surrounded by two nines. Um, So, can we, so this can go as high as six. I, I find it hard to believe that this, both of these lines could be Renban, because it feels to me like we wouldn't get enough there'll be too many low digits in these six cells. These, these would have to be one, two, three, four, five, and six, I think, because this line's got a two on it, so it can never get higher than six on this line. And this line's got a two on it, so it can never get higher. Yes, so this would have to be one, two, three, four, five, six. This would have to be seven, eight, nine. I don't know, maybe that is possible then. It just feels awfully cluttered. Um, hmm, I'm not sure. Okay, we'll come back to that if I can't see anything quickly anywhere else. Let's have a think about Sudoku. You know, is that Sudoku I see before me? No. No, it's not. Um, um okay so what lines have i looked at no i haven't looked at these lines and i haven't looked at this line but this line so if this line was whispers that would have to be a six and this would have to be oh this would have to be a high number that couldn't be eight or seven or six. If you put six in there and it's a whisper, you've got to put double one in the box around it. So that would have to be nine. You couldn't put nine on here. You couldn't put, oh no, we don't. You could put nine on here because we don't know if this is whispers or Remban. And if it's, if it's whispers, you could absolutely have a nine here. Right, and this one is Renban. Oh, right, no, this is this is more straightforward than I thought. Okay, the way to look at this is to look at this one. And this is a lowish digit, and there's an eight here. And this is a Renban line, according to Arnis. So, what goes on this line? 
And the answer, amongst other things, is seven has got to go on it somewhere, because we've got to have the digits between this digit and this digit. Well, seven can't go in the middle. So once seven can't go in the middle, how could this ever be a Remban line now? Given that there's a nine here and this is lower than seven, there would need to be a seven on the line and there simply cannot be. That's beautiful. Right, that's beautiful. So this, this is a Whispers line. So let's give up that one. The mantle of w -ness. And that means this can't be five. So this is six. This is five. This is four. This is five. Um, now this is a whispers line. So this digit is high and we've just, well, we just worked out this has got to be nine. So now, now there's a nine on this line, which is a Renban line. And it's got five, it's got nine on it. So it's got to be those two squares are six and seven. And there's a six here. This is just beautiful. It is so beautiful. This seven sees that. That's eight. That's seven. This is a whispers line. So seven can't be next to three. So that's a two. That's a three. Three working beautifully surrounded by eight and nine. That's not a three. That's not a two. These digits have to be low because this is a whispers line. Ah, six, six is on a whispers line. That's got to be next to one. So that's not a one anymore. Uh, there's a one in one of those two cells. Do we? Yes, we worked out this was a Ren band, didn't we? So that could have one on it. We don't know what this one is yet. I don't think. I've rather lost track of my labeling. I, I, I remember this one is a um, a Remband, so I'm going to reinstate the R there. Um, now, let's go back though to this digit, which has to be low, and it's not one. Oh, and it can be, f I don't believe it, it can be four, because it is surrounded bizarrely by double nine. It's one of those rare occasions on a Whispers line where the two digit, the two neighbouring digits to this cell do not see each other through the medium of Sudoku. So we've got to put eight in here by Sudoku. Eight in one of those three. Now, can eight go on this line? That's an interesting question. No, because there's a two on it and it's a Remban. That's not eight. Now, if eight was here, oh, that can be a whisper. Okay. Nine is over here by Sudoku. Six is over here by Sudoku. Seven down here by Sudoku. Eight up here. Nine up here. This is why I neglect Sudoku. Sudoku's useless, doesn't do anything. Um, hmm. Three and four in this row are not there because of that three, four. So that's a three, four pair, which means these must be a five, eight pair, I want to say, which means these have got to be a six, seven pair, perhaps which means these have got to be a two, five pair, which is probably interesting somehow, some way. Um, can we get the, well, can we get these two digits? At least they would tell us whether this, these lines have restrictions. Two, three, four, and nine, no, two, three, and four, this can't be nine. Ah, right. So that one can't be whispers because if it's whispers, it can't have five on it. So this would be a two and then this should be a high digit and it's not. So this line is Renban. Let's put that in. Uh, where's my R? Uh, so can that actually be a six now? The answer is yes. <laughs> six there, five there, four there, bobbins. Right. Okay. Um, right, what about that one then? So this is two, three, four, and nine. It's not two, so that's three, four, or nine. And it's next to a six or a seven. Right, okay, so this also is, a, is not a whisper. Because if it's a whisper, this being a high digit needs to be next to a low digit, but it would have to be five away. And five away from six or seven is a one or a two. It's not a three or a four. So this line is... 
a ren ban as well, and that necessitates more Ring of the grid. Um, so that means, oh, I th have I put no? I put that R in the in the wrong notation. There we go. That's better. So this is now. This is never a three, is it? Because it's only a three cell line. Three, four, five doesn't get me as high as six. So this means this is a four or a nine. So if this is nine, this needs to be eight and it can't be. Oh, that's gorgeous. Right, so this is four. This is six. This is five. This is five. This is eight. This is seven. This is five by Sudoku. So these have got to be twos, threes, and fours to finish off this box. That's not two. Uh, okay, that's a four, so that's not a four anymore. So can that be a six now? No, if that's a six, it needs a four because of the, well, six, five, and this would need to be a four and it can't be. So the six goes here. So what are the options for this cell then? If this is five, this has to be three, this has to be four. If this is two, this has to be three, two, three, this could be one or four. Oh. <laughs> Bother, <laughs> I think is the euphemistic way of putting it. Um, okay, this is two, three. Oh, that's, no, this, look, there's a nine here. So where does nine go in this row? That's a sensible question. You can only go there. Nine lives at the top of the grid. These squares have got to be one, two, and three. There's a two here. So two goes in the corner. Nope, you don't get a song for that. This is, uh, okay, where, where does two go in that row? It seems to be a sensible question. I think it can only go here. Oh, this, yeah, that's still fine in terms of the, the whisper. There's R, ah, two by Sudoku goes there, and that's knocking a, knocking the one up here, I think. So that's a one, and that's really unhelpful. That still means this can be a whisper or a Renban. This one is a Renban. So this is either one, three, which would have to be, oh no, no, you can't put a one on this line. So this is three and six. And there's a six here, right, that's lovely. So that's a six, that's a three. That might help us, yes, that's a three, that's a four. That's a one, that's a one, that's a three, but this is on a Renban. So that's got to go two, three in that direction. This is a two, this is a five, that's a three, that's a four. This is four and seven, that can be filled in. And I think we might have cracked this, you know, that's a five by Sudoku. This is a six by Sudoku, that's a four. What do we need at the top of this column? We need six, no, we don't, no, we don't. We need five and nine. Ah, okay, so it's it's all about this line now. Oh, this cell is a four, and these squares are seven and eight. Oh, that's done it, right, that's done it. This, this cell being a seven or an eight tells us the nature of this line, which is not Renban, because it's got a one on it. So this is whispers and you can't put a five on a whispers line. Good grief. Oh, we still don't know what that digit is though. That could be seven or eight on a legitimate whisper. So we can't do that. So it must just be a bit of Sudoku, I think, to finish this off, hopefully. Uh, three, four, and seven into those squares. So that's a seven. That's a four, that's a three. And that's six, eight, and nine which is not resolved. Ah, I hope this gets resolved or I've made a mistake. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. That's a nine by Sudoku. So this is a six, seven pair. That's no longer able, that's an eight now in fact, by Sudoku. So this, ah, so nine gets placed in this box, good. Nine, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight in the corner we need to put a one in here and a five and there we go that is one heck of a beautiful puzzle wow just beautiful start to finish florian i absolutely love that that was well every part of it i loved the break-in and the fact it was sort of 
It was very well signalled and very, very cute. And then I loved how these whispers line, well, whispers slash Remban lines kept revealing themselves and just, you know, inching the logic forward. I hope you enjoyed that. Do let me know in the comments. I do enjoy them, especially when they're kind. And what a run we're on in terms of puzzles at the moment. Yet another absolute worldie from a world-class uh, constructor. Thanks for watching. We'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.